Welcome to Wallet Hut Berlin, where I have Visus Circle with me. Uh, first things first, how is uh, Visus Circle circa 2019 doing? Uh, very well, and we're happy to be in Berlin playing at Wallet at Heart tonight. Um, we've just come over from the UK where we played Rebellion Festival in Blackpool with an amazing array, an array of bands. And also the next night we played at um, London in uh, Camden Town with uh, DRI, MDC, Antisocial and uh, BKS and that was a sold out show. And the next night we played Bloodstains Festival in Leeds. We played with uh, Channel 3 and also with The Weirdos. These are two bands that were, you know, very inspirational to me as a kid. So it's pretty amazing for me that we actually got to play with these bands and uh, they're good people. So, um, and the club was great too. It's like a, uh, you know, it's looks like it's run by people that have got all the right ideas and, you know, they're into um, hardcore and punk rock, but they also run like a vegan cafe and, um, the space looks like it's really well used, so um, it's it's all really good, I suppose. So back in the day, in the 80s, when you were starting, did you ever imagine that you would be 35 years later in you know in European tour in Berlin and London playing? And what was the musical career plan at the time? To be honest, there really was no plan when the band first started. I was just a teenager, I was probably uh, 15 years old, 14, 15 years old, even maybe younger and I wanted to drum and I started drumming and all that and I thought oh this is okay and I, all I wanted to do I was trying to find other people to be in a band with because I had listened to music and I saw bands and I really liked doing that and one day someone just handed me the mic and I just went for it and I met other the other guys at that time it was like Les and Albie and it just kicked off and it, it, it happened and um, within a year we'd recorded a 7 inch and released that and then after that we did an album and that got released in Australia but it also got released overseas and we were touring around Australia and doing shows and for me I mean I was just a kid like uh, when I got into punk rock I had no plans or ambitions or anything I, to, to tell you the truth I don't it's sort of it's something I love to do it's part of me it's like an energy that I enjoy and I, I feel that I can express myself and, and, and write things down and get my point across about things that I see uh, wrong in the world. So um, yeah, um, as far as like a, it being a career, I, it's just been something that's natural and you know 35 years later, like being here in Germany and the other night. Um, playing at Bloodstains Festival and playing with The Weirdos and Channel 3. I mean, that's crazy. When I was a kid and I listened to those bands, do you think I ever thought I'd play gigs with those bands? No way. And playing Rebellion, I mean, we played Rebellion. I had jet lag when I got there and uh, turned up at the show and I went to see The Drones and that was just crazy after The Drones. We went and we watched TSOL. I mean, th this is stuff I grew up with, and we got to play that festival. So, yeah, really amazing. Um, I mean, when I was a kid, I mean, uh, I probably didn't even expect to to make it to like 21 years old. You know, I grew up in an industrial area in the western suburbs of Australia, of Australia in Melbourne, and um, it was. Uh, I don't have a wealthy family or anything like that. I'm very working class, have very working class roots and stuff like that. So as, as long as I've been in the band, I've also worked on that. And I mean, there have been times when, you know, things have been a lot better for us, but I've basically worked all my life. And a lot of people I know have done that too, who have been in punk rock bands. Um, 
And for me too, you know, you know, I know you have the punk rock scene, say in the early 80s that existed, say in places like Germany and probably places like Berlin. We have New York, the hardcore scene, or Southern California, and you also have... Um, where else like things that happened in japan all different uh, different scenes around the world but in melbourne there was a thriving scene in the early 80s 81 82 you had bands like the sick things you had depression you had end result you had charred remains you had bodies um end result these were all bands that were just as good as any of the bands that were um, happening overseas, there we go again. Um, and um, you know, there was there was a thriving. You know, uh, me seeing those bands that inspired me. Also, the earlier stuff from the seventies, like Corporate Body and the Z Cars and the Zorros, and even back further than that, uh, bands like the Saints and the Thought Criminals. Um, and stuff like the Zed cars and the marching girls and the Zorros and stuff like that. There's always been a thriving music scene in Australia, right up from the 60s and stuff like the um, Velvet Hearts and stuff like the Coloured Balls and then the, the, the stuff that was sort of like proto-punk and then the 70s punk and 80s hardcore. I mean, it's, it, it, it's been there for quite a while and as a band we're just a natural progression of that and then everything that came after us you know and bands like toe to toe or bands like parkway drive or all that stuff bands that have just that keep going and keep progressing yeah in uh, 35 years what have been the most memorable moments for you or the best moments um it's for me it's really hard to say because I've toured all over the world I've played in Asia I have played in New Zealand I've played in America I've played over Europe I've toured through Australia so I've basically done tours all over the world and at times everything's so I've had some amazing shows but I think also too one of the things when when you're down and out and things are hard I think that's a, a test of your merit and how much you believe in your craft and what you're doing but I, I think like when we played at Rebellion in Blackpool at the arena room I mean that was an amazing feeling and for me too I had a friend there who I started writing a pen pal with 35 years ago and it was his birthday around that time and we're on stage and I look down and he's in the audience and you know that was I uh, felt that right in my heart it was a, a really good thing that show also there were people from Scotland and different parts of the UK there were people from America there were people from the Czech Republic different parts of uh, Europe of course and also people from Australia people from New Zealand amazing people from punk rock family from all hardcore family from all around the world a lot happens in 35 years and it's yeah. not always good so what have been like the worst experiences with the band um, probably uh, I would say violence at shows and that was mainly in the late 80s where we would have people turning up and they were boneheads uh, people with you know really stupid attitudes racist and all that sort of stuff and they would come to shows and try and intimidate people and stuff like that and there would be really extreme violence i mean we turned up and we were playing at a venue in melbourne on one of the main streets and we had a whole bunch of guys come in and the gig basically just turned into a riot and they had to we the venue got shut down and the police come and the police were just hitting people with batons and there was just a massive fight and um needless to say we couldn't play that venue for a long time and it was things like that and also when things like that happen it makes people scared to come to shows because they think there will be violence and that and you know, I don't like to admit I don't like to admit that, but you know, sometimes 
you can't just say, oh, you can't turn the other cheek. If someone's trying to physically hurt you, you have to look after yourself. And sometimes during that period, it came down to that. Unfortunate, but things like that happen, yeah. yeah. Okay, and I'm back to a bit brighter subjects. Uh, you already mentioned the new music coming out. So uh, when, will we, when will we hear that new music and uh, what kind of music will we hear? Um, well, we've got plans to record a new album and um, I suppose it's just a progression of what we're doing. It's got like that vicious circle sound, but I think some of it it's quite fast and it's got a, like a bit of a metallic edge uh, but also we it, it looks like we will probably do a split album with a uh, punk hardcore band from california called antisocial so we're looking for that for the future and um, basically with that a tour of america and australia with both bands that everything going to plan and also we want to come back to Europe next year so but the plan for us is to just we've already demoed we demoed about 20 songs and we have um, songs already worked out and it's just a case of nutting down exactly all the songs we're going to use and then just going in recording them so yeah but I'd say yeah next year there will be music coming out Yeah, and it will be on vinyl and digital platform and probably CD. So I'm really happy that with the emergence of vinyl again, because I love vinyl, I never stopped buying it. And I've collected vinyl records since I was like 11 years old. So I was just down at Cortex Records. I think I ended up buying about 12 albums. So all on vinyl too. Yeah, my partner, my wife is going to hate me. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you so much and uh, break a leg tonight. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.